Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Blended families are becoming more and more common in Canada and, in fact, around the world. What is the secret to their success? I'm here with a blended family. I'm here with Rizwan Ali and Hina Mirza. Hina, we've had you on the show before, and you're here with your husband. I am. So I want to ask you to begin, what is a blended family? So maybe I'll ask Hina that question. <laughs> I can take that, yeah. Um, so essentially, a blended family is one where two individuals who were previously married are bringing two separate set of children into their new relationship. So not only are they getting married and uh, getting to know one another in their relationship, but they're also children now from both sides, uh, from both parents that are becoming part of a new family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Rizwan, you and Hina are in a blended family. Mm -hmm. Tell me what it looks like. So essentially, um, in terms of the, the children, you know, there's four children. Um, there was one daughter that I had and Hina had three children. And alhamdulillah, I think that uh, the process itself was a um, little long, but we, we made sure that, you know, we wanted to uh, take our time because obviously it was a big step in, in trying to, first of all, get remarried. Mm -hmm. And then when you have children involved with that, <laughs> obviously that's a whole different set of challenges. Adding more challenge. layers to yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So how important is it, Hina and Rizwan, to have an, uh, a strong relationship um, amongst the parents first? I think I want to backtrack a little bit and say that marriage is important for any family, irrespective of whether they're blended or not. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about a blended family situation, you're talking about kids who've come from a previous broken home, their parents got divorced. So they've got a set of uh, anxieties and fears and, you know, just that, that discomfort when it comes to conflict and, you know, any kind of marital discord or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think what it does is it puts the magnifying glass on our marriage a lot more because we want to lead with that better example. We want to try and do better. So whereas, yes, marriage is important to any family, I think in terms of blended families, there's definitely more of uh, that consciousness among, uh, within the relationship as well. Yeah, definitely. I think that when you, when you think of a, a solid marriage, like any couple, you want to have a strong marriage. But when you, when you add stepchildren to that mix there, now you've realized that, you know, these kids are coming from broken homes, broken family. So you want to be, give them a positive environment. Mm -hmm. It's even more uh, important now that you give them that positive environment and you're a role model for them. Mm -hmm. And I guess you need to have really good communication, right? And, and be able to be on the same page in order to deal with, you know, two sets of children. <laughs> it's, it's the key, you know, yeah. key uh, communication. Uh, I know that uh, Hina being a psychotherapist as well, uh, I learned over time and even before I, I mattered that, you know, communication is such a key. I know we, we talk about men that, you know, sometimes they don't talk about their feelings, they don't express their thoughts. And, but when you realize in a, in a blended marriage now, you know, just with us, each other, you know, with the kids, uh, there's so much that's happening there that it's imperative that we, we have those uh, lines of communications open with them, that we, we talk to them. If we notice something is off, that we address that. Uh, you know, we do it in groups sometimes, sometimes we'll do it one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So whatever the situation calls for, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Now, Hina, I know you brought three children into the relationship. Did, yeah. How did you help them to adjust to the new reality? Um, right off the bat, just early conversations about intentions, you know, uh, letting them know that I, marriage, remarriage was on the horizon or could potentially be on the horizon and really listening to them, understanding what their concerns were. Um, addressing those concerns early on and not really diminishing their narrative through the experience. And then obviously, um, you can ask Riz, he went through a, a very long vetting process of, you know, I, I had a whole plan in my head that this is, these are the steps. And when we came to that step about introducing our children to one another, um, we really, as I said, like we focus on building those individual relationships first. So my three children met with Riz, spent time with him, and he made the effort to get to know them individually as, you know, people. So we're not hurting them together. Mm -hmm. And I took time with his daughter. We met ind individually as well. I spent time with her, got to know her a little bit. So they had those relationships with us prior to even meeting each other mm -hmm. because it's a huge experience for a child to say, oh, I'm going to have a step sibling. Now there's yes. going to be more people in the house. Um, and just to kind of, you know, slow down that transition for them with, building those relationships individually. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask, like, what, what are the common concerns that a child might have in that situation? And either of you can answer. 
fears, I think. Yeah, I think that... Um, <laughs> Do they worry, for example, that... You should have our children on the show for yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> would they worry, for example, that their relationship with their parent might change, you know, or that, you know, how are they going to deal with these step sisters or brothers? Like, what are their concerns? No, definitely. I think that's one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we kind of noticed that, you know, especially with my daughter, um, you know, coming, I mean, Actually, it's kind of backs up a little bit. I know when I first was thinking of getting remarried, uh, one of my thing was that, you know, I don't think I wanted to have more children, that other person have children. But, you know, when I met Hina, you know, Alhamdulillah, she mentioned she had three kids. So I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> you go from zero to three. But Alhamdulillah, you know, just, just seeing that, um, you know, her parenting style, uh, you know, the way she was talking about that, I said, you know what, that's one of the key things is that when you're getting, thinking of remarrying, especially when you have children, you know, parenting itself is so key there. And when we talked and I said, yeah, I think this is the person because that's going to be so important to have those parenting skills, mm -hmm. especially in, in a blended family. So, and I think that's the, alhamdulillah. Was that yeah, and I kind of, yeah, for sure. I want to comment on that as well. When people are looking to get remarried, uh, I highly recommend that if you're a parent and you have children to look for another parent. Because mm -hmm. that vibe, it has to match, you know, like if you don't have a child, you'll never understand yes. how you prioritize your kids. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to second marriages, that priority list shuffles. So, you know, whereas like in the biological parents um, relationship, the relationship comes before the kids. You know, like if we ever if I ever talk about marriage, I stack it up differently. But when you have a blended family, that relationship with your child has to be valued and maintained. Mm -hmm. So when you kind of, when you come into this scenario of blending the relationship, if re like one of my criteria for getting remarried was that the man had to have kids because <laughs> if, and if my husband didn't have children, he would never understand yes. why I prioritize my kids or why they have to come first. And similarly to in Riz's situation, right? Like if I wasn't a mother, I wouldn't be able to relate to our daughter the way that I do today. So yeah, I think it's a huge criteria mm -hmm. um, in a blended situation that you know you wanna approach a person or a partner that has an understanding of parenthood before they actually even blend the family. Mm -hmm. I think your situation is different, but I think in our case, uh, you know, I asked Amna, my, my daughter, you know, like, how do you feel about you know, the blended family? You know, she said that, you know, I went from being the only child <laughs> to having like three of the siblings. Now. Yes. So, and she has company now. And, and, you know, as a single parent at that time, you don't realize that how important it is for children to have other children, at, you know, around them. Mm -hmm. You know, they can visit their home, that kind of stuff, but to have them living with you, yeah. that is so important. Mm -hmm. So, Rizwan, what are the common challenges that one would find in a blended family? You mentioned that your daughter liked the adjustment from, you know, being a, 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 a one child to having a bunch of children around her, but some kids might not appreciate that. So I'm thinking that could be one challenge, right? It could be, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what are, what are other challenges that you might experience? I, I think that, you know, when you look at children, you know, uh, one thing we have parents, we have to realize that each child, you know, could come from the same parents, but they're going to be different. Mm -hmm. And so you have to recognize that each child has a different personality. And I think that, um, you know, it, it could be a challenge, but at the same time, it creates a diversity. And I think in our case, uh, you know, when we have dinners, uh, you know, it's really interesting because <laughs> we have such lively conversations, you know, and that each child is kind of like just, you know, just it keeps like jumping in to say <laughs> what they want to say, you know, and mm. it's like, so I think that's one of the things that we also do as well, you know, to kind of uh, create that bond, strong bond between the children and each other and us as well, is that we make sure that we have dinner every night together. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that's a chance for us to connect with the kids, and like I said, a lot of time, it's literally just like they want they have so much to share. And alhamdulillah, I think it's really awesome for us to have that kind of connecting point with them. Mm -hmm. Now, who disciplines the children? That, that's a big one, right? <laughs> Everybody disciplines their own. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think for day-to-day -day issues, like the, the theme of the house, like, you know, doing your dishes, picking up after yourself, I think it's pretty clear that everybody, uh, the expectations are the same. And, you know, whether Riz says something or I say something, you step in and as a parent, you're like, hey, you know, can you take care of the dishes and whatnot? So that's kind of like one of those in the rolling processes. But when we have serious issues or concerns, I think it's always better to, for the biological parent to speak to their own child on serious matters. Because there's this one thing that when it's uh, ties of blood, there's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, you as a, as a biological parent, you can say whatever you want. You can, you know, get angry, get upset. But that love, that raham that Allah has put between you two, it brings you back your child, you know, like they forgive their parent and the parent forgives the child. And that love and that bonding is a seamless process. So I think when it comes to blending the family and specifically stepchildren, 
what ends up happening is that you become more mindful of yourself Mm -hmm. and you're careful with what you're saying and, you know, how you're, when it comes to discipline, you know, like if there's a concern or there's an issue, sometimes you do speak to your partner and you say, hey, you know, I mean, I didn't like this or I didn't feel that that was the right thing. And then the partner has to step in and speak to their child. Um, But yeah, for sure, like from our own perspectives, I think we've become so much more mindful of our communication style the way that we address problems and the way that we address issues, because we know that, you know, it could be so easily misinterpreted Mm -hmm. when it's not your own kid, especially in the very beginning. Like there's so much room for misinterpretation because everybody's on edge and the fears are so real. And the rules are different too, right? For sure. For example, you might have, you might have had different rules for your children and Rizwan might have had different rules for his daughter. And then you bring them together and it's like, well, she gets to do that. And why can't I do this? You know what I mean? I think so, the rules have to stay the same, you know, from to be home. the same I think for what the all bigger the bigger challenge is the rules between the other house of the other parent and uh, your rules. Like, I think uh, that becomes more yes. of a challenge. Yes, we should talk about that. Because how do you manage those relationships? I mean, that also adds to the complexity of a so blended family, So can we family, go back right? a little and just, I just want to just talk about the fact that our values have to be aligned in order to overcome those challenges okay. with parenting. Um, I think you can talk about that a little bit. Well, one thing I wanted to say was that uh, when you just talked about the discipline part, I just want to go back to that for a second is that it's really interesting, like when you're in that position of a step parent, and like you were saying earlier that, you know, when it's your own child, you have that kind of little freedom there to kind of say things, you know, sometimes off cuff, you know, but mm-hmm. when it comes to your step children, you can't really, you don't have that, you know, mm. you have to be really mindful of what you're saying and how you're saying it to them. Um, in terms of values, uh, I think that, um, you know, we, we did spend time, you know, talking about them before we got married to make sure that we, they do align. Uh, because obviously if, you know, if it's, and you have to kind of think of it this way, that you're trying to find the right match between the, the couples, and now you're adding children to the mix there. Mm-hmm. So if the, the values are not aligned, you know, you're looking at a lot more challenges down the road then. Mm-hmm. So like you are saying earlier about rules and discipline, that kind of stuff. So alhamdulillah, you know, we do have a very sort of similar view of what, how we want things to be. Yeah. And when we have that sort of similar vision, where it's easy to say that to the kids. Mm-hmm. So the alignment between us, mm-hmm. you know, like even before we bring the children into it, our values have to be similar, our styles of parenting. And, you know, as I said, you're never going to find complete alignment. Yes. And just to understand and clarify that even biological parents don't share perfect alignment when it comes <laughs> to discipline and value. So mm-hmm. naturally, this is a, it's a natural byproduct. But the good thing is, alhamdulillah, if our end goal and if our vision is the same, then those little things are easier to overcome. So when it comes to things like, you know, what are your current, what are your challenges or what are your problems? Yeah, disciplining, you know, um, bonding with them, creating those relationships, for sure, those are, um, those might become issues. But I really feel like, you know, that value alignment between us helps translate into the rest of the family as well. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. How do you create that bond? You mentioned the bond. Like, how do you create a a bond between, you know, let's say your family and Rizwan's family, Rizwan's daughter. How does that work? Like, how do you build a family out of what was originally two, fr- two families? So one of the things, like I mentioned earlier, is that we, we make sure that we have dinner every night together. Mm-hmm. And I think that for us is the connecting point because, uh, you know, we all have busy lives, including the kids. So when we come together at dinner, and like I said earlier, that, you know, they're really itching to share what happened through the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we do activities, you know, what are activities that the kids like to do? We do those activities, uh, and it could include like going for hikes, just going for trips. Uh, we love board games, you know. So <laughs> we we do those things, you know. And very focused we, on the kids, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Like what what we don't we don't parent like forcing our likes on them. We just sort of really just take what the kids want because that's when you're really going to see them come out and do things that they love, um, and you know, be themselves, be natural. So alhamdulillah, yeah, for sure. Like lots of activity based living and experience based living to make sure that they're all doing stuff that they love and we're all a part of that journey. Mm-hmm. And, and I think we got also lucky that actually all four of them like sports. So that's something <laughs> okay, else they have in common as well. And we like sports Watching, well, playing, so. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think alhamdulillah, we have a lot in common. Mm-hmm. Now, Rizwan, you mentioned, you know, two people and, and children. And I thought, well, what about the ex and their families? Because you're going to have to definitely um, negotiate and navigate with them as well. It's not like, you know, you can just stay in your house and be fine. Right, your children are going to go off to visit their your ex's family, and they're going to have a whole set of rules there. There's going to be all sorts of transitions. Can you speak about that a little bit more? Um, how how to navigate that whole process? Well, I mean, I think one of the things that's important, like you mentioned, the different rules and so forth, is that uh, when it comes to other parents, 
Uh, one of the things we like to make sure is that we don't say anything negative, mm. you know, especially in front of kids or even in general. Because one thing we recognize, you know, is that for these children, uh, you know, those are their parents, mm -hmm. you know, and this is their door to Jannah. Mm -hmm. So we can't try to influence that relationship in a negative way. We have to try to make it a positive. Uh, when you kind of think of the challenges the kids have in trying to navigate what is happening between, you know, four that's set of parents now. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, so we have to kind of make it easy for them. Um, so I think that's that's kind of things. That we yeah, essentially. And of course, there's going to be differences, right? Like we've got to demystify this that all oh, the other household is in complete said, alignment with yours. There's no way it's going to no. be. Biological parents don't agree with one another. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not it's not as uh, it, like, let's not make it that scary. Yes, absolutely. The rules can be different. The standards of living, the way that the parent wants to, you know, the things that they like to do and activities. But I think it's what Riz said, acceptance and embracing it, you know, being mm -hmm. happy for the kids. If they had an experience at their other parent's house that you would never imagine for them, um, you know, just how do you feel about it? How, mm -hmm. how was it for you? Really just making it child focused, because when we put our spin on it, that, well, this is about us and what we think in our house, the child, this poor kid gets confused <laughs> and says, what? what? Yeah. So just, you know, what, what, it, what was it like for you? What did you do? Tell me about your day, you know, and being very supportive of their experiences at their other parents' house. Because what I really feel about that is that the more um, health you have with that, like the, the more healthy you are with the other parent in the sense that you're speaking positively about them or you're being supportive of their, um, you know, whatever's happening at their house, the child will then feel more comfortable being at your place. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, okay, you know what? Like, I don't have to walk on eggshells if I'm excited to go to dad's or if I'm excited to go to mom's. Mm -hmm. And that comfort and that, uh, you know, that ease that we create for them, inshallah, that really helps us as a family, you know, progress in that bonding of that family. Because I know, like, mashallah, with Riz, uh, always made it a point, you know, that I'm not there to take your dad's place. Mm -hmm. Your dad is your dad, and he's always going to be your dad. And I say that to our daughter as well, like Riz's daughter as well, that, um, you know, I'm never going to be your mom. Your mom is your door to Jannah. I'm just a bonus parent that Allah <laughs> chose to add into your life. So I'm going to provide that support, that mentorship. I'm going to add value to your life. But I'm definitely not here to take anybody's position or place or take away from that relationship that you have with the other parent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rizwan, what advice would you have to somebody who is getting into a blended marriage, kind of confused about what to do? What, what would you advise them? So what I would say is, is that, um, you know, especially if, if you're um, like a divorced parent, um, I think you've got to work on yourself first. Mm. Because uh, if you're going with, you know, let's say baggage and you're going to go into a relationship now, and with other potential kids now. So I think it's very important that you work on yourself before you kind of put yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, Hina, would you, I'm sure you have something to add. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I think just being a visionary, you know, when you are taking on that role of being a blended family, you have to be a visionary and you have to really step out of your own comfort zone as well. The kids are an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a privilege that we got blessed with children. Yes, our marriages didn't work out, but then, as I said, you know, you got bonus children or you got mm. a bonus parent. And to have that vision that this child's life is something that we have to respect and value. So some things that we usually talk about in our home is, you know, events and experiences that the child has to be able to celebrate those and not to get into that. Like, not, don't let your divorce or your ex and your relationship get into the way of the child's future. Um, you know, things like graduations and engagements and weddings and the birth of a child, all of those special celebrations. As a therapist, I see children of divorced parents come in. And one of the first things that they'll say is, I have resentment towards my parent because I couldn't ever be happy. Like every happy moment of mine or occasion of mine was always overshadowed by my parents' divorce. Hmm. So when you are getting into a blended family to understand that there is another parent, they have to be welcomed into the system. It's not easy, but that's for another episode. Um, you know, they have to be welcomed into the system and you have to create room in your head and in your heart that you're not just here for a marriage, you're here for the family. Mm -hmm. And essentially when you become child focused, then you got to put a lot of your own, you know, inhibitions and emotions in the back on the back burner or for a separate day or a separate time because blended families really require parent focused adults. Hina, Rizwan, thank you for joining us and thank you especially for showing us what is possible with yeah, the blended family. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Our videos reach people all over the world. 
We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today. <laughs>